Hi, my name is Rainer Fika Coleman, and today I will be presenting on behalf of Esquire Group on the topic of withholding tax on payments of U.S. source income. First of all, um, this presentation was prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor should it be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. So a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, my name is Reiner Figa Coleman. I'm an enrolled agent and a senior tax associate here at Esquire Group. We are a international tax advisory firm focusing on cross-border uh, U.S. taxation. I've worked across Asia, the Europe, as well as the U.S., fluent in English and German. I do specialize in international taxation, including tax, issue, tax issues facing U.S. citizens and resident aliens living abroad, expatriation, foreign unreported income and assets, um, investing or doing business abroad, and foreign investment in the U.S. If you want more information about myself, uh, my full biography is available on our website. So let's get started on today's content. Um, first of all, what is withholding tax? Um, withholding tax is a type of tax which is required to be withheld from a payment and paid to the government by the payer on behalf of the payee. Um, so for example, if you are an employee working for a company, um, the company would most likely withhold part of your salary and transfer this to the IRS in order to cover your tax liability. So it's money that is essentially being uh, withheld. <laughs> um, so rather than paying full funds to yourself, part of that is being allocated for tax purposes and being remitted to the tax authorities to cover any potential tax liabilities. Withholding tax can apply to payments to foreign persons as well as uh, US persons in some cases. Most payments of U.S. source income paid to foreign persons are subject to U.S. withholding tax. Um, this is primarily so that uh, foreign individuals or foreign companies are not running away with the tax bill. It's a system that's in place to ensure that a tax liability is paid for. Um, the topics that we'll be covering today are who is classified as a foreign person, which payments of U.S. source income are subject to withholding, the rates of withholding, who is responsible for the withholding, the consequences um, if the funds are not withheld, and getting a refund if you overpay or if the funds are withheld in excess of what you owe. And so first of all, let's clarify on the definition of a foreign person. A foreign person includes non-resident aliens, so an, an individual. Um, this would be a person which is not a U.S. citizen, a U.S. green card holder, or a U.S. resident. So essentially if someone's living outside of the United States and is not a green card holder or a citizen, this is probably them. A foreign corporation, foreign partnership, foreign trust, foreign estate, any other person that is not a U.S. person, foreign branches of a U.S. financial institution, and a U.S. branch of a foreign corporation or partnership. So what types of U.S. source income are subject to withholding? This is referred to as FDAP income, um, fixed or determinable annual or periodic income. This includes but is not limited to interest, dividends, rents, royalties, premiums, annuities, um, compensation for services performed, uh, substitute payments in a securities lending transaction, as well as other fixed or determinable annual or periodic gains, profits, or income. Let's talk a little bit about the withholding rates and who is responsible for withholding the funds. The general standard uh, withholding rate is 30%. This applies to most foreign persons and in the case that they have uh, U.S. source income. In some cases, there are lower tax rates um, if a tax treaty is in place. This would need to be looked at more closely because each tax treaty has different details and different rates. Um, so if a tax treaty is applicable, it would need to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the withholding agent or the payer is responsible for withholding and paying the tax to the IRS. So in the example of a 
uh, employee and a company. The withholding agent would be the company because they are withholding the funds for the individual and remitting this to the IRS. In cases of foreign persons, um, they would need to provide the withholding agent with the respective W-8 form. Um, there are different varieties varieties of W-8 forms depending on the type of uh, person. So if it's a company or an individual, it's a different form, as well as if depending on the specific situation. Um, so this is needs to be the correct W-8 form provided to the withholding agent. Uh, this provides the nece necessary information so that the withholding agent knows how much income to withhold and has the correct identifying information so that the funds which are withheld are properly linked to the tax account. Um, so if you're having funds withheld and it's then being sent to the IRS, it needs to be accurately recorded as to which tax account this gets linked to. So um, if you're later filing a tax return, they're able to link the money they received to the tax uh, payer of the tax return that you're filing. Withhold the appropriate amount of tax and pay it to the IRS on or before the required deposit date. So the, the withholding agent is responsible for remitting these funds to the IRS. It's not the individual or the taxpayer themselves that, that transfers these funds. It's the withholding agent. The withholding agent also annually files form 1042 and 1040S to report the tax withheld to the IRS and the payee. This provides the detailed information as to how much was withheld and the respective uh, identifying information as to which account it was linked to. Um, if the withholding agent or the payer fails to withhold and pay the tax to the IRS, it is the withholding agent which is responsible for the tax, interest, and penalties. It is not the payee itself. In the example of a house being sold, uh, say a, say a non-resident alien owns a U.S. house or property, and they sell it, um, this would be then the withholding agent. So the, the escrow company, which would withhold the funds to cover the tax liability, and then they would transfer this to the US uh, IRS. So it would not be the individual that sold the home. It would be the, the person processing the payment who would be liable for remitting this tax and, and then would also be liable for any interest or penalties if they fail to do so. How can you get a refund? So say, for example, you have sold a property, 30% of that income was withheld and has been remitted to the IRS. If this is in excess of your actual tax liability, um, you have the right to reclaim the funds which, or the, the, the funds which you are entitled to. Um, so the overpayment, the extra funds that were withheld in addition to the tax liability, which you're liable for. Um, you can only claim a refund if there is such an overpayment. So if you owe additional funds or the funds with were, or the withheld tax covers exactly the tax liability, there would be no overpayment to claim. So if there is an overpayment and you want to reclaim that, you would generally do this by filing a U.S. tax return. Most cases, you're not able to do this until the tax year has been completed. So say that funds were withheld right now in June 2017, um, you would have to wait until the year has completed to file a 2017 tax return to reclaim those funds our presentation today on withholding tax. If you have additional questions or are interested in our services, I encourage you to visit our website, esquiregroup.com. Um, you can also write us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Um, we do have a lot of information available on our website as well as other webinars. Um, we do host webinars on a regular basis. So if you are interested in international tax issues, I do encourage you to visit our website and register for our newsletter, which will then update you on a regular basis with the times and dates of our upcoming um, webinars. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your time.